Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to create our spawner that's going to bounce back and forth and throw asteroids at us. Sweet. <laughs> right? So, um, first thing I'm actually going to do is, because we're going to create an animation to make the spawner go back and forth, I need a folder for that saved animation to live. So, uh, let's create that folder ahead of time by right-clicking right on the Playground Project folder. Choose Create Folder. And there's my folder and I'm ready to name it. I'm just gonna call it animations. And we don't need to put anything in it yet, but having that folder ahead of time can be helpful. Now, let's get our actual little square that's gonna act as our spawner. So it's gonna be a sprite, even though the player's never actually gonna see it. So in the sprites folder, go to the playground sprites and there's a geometric shapes folder in there. And I'm gonna go with, ooh, the rounded square. Not that it matters, the player never sees it, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna put it up here, oh, just inside the edge of my view here. Now, I want this thing to be going back and forth, and then we'll make it spawn things, but right now we just need it to be going back and forth. And you could code that, but one of my favorite little tricks is using the animation window to do this. So go up to the window dropdown, and choose animation. Now be careful, there is an animator, animator parameter, and this animation. So pick the animation one, and it pops up with this window, and I'm gonna grab the name of the window and dock it over here on the right side. Kind of space this out so I can see what I'm doing a little bit here. Okay. Now, animations can actually be saved as files, which is why we made that folder ahead of time. So hit create. And it's saying, okay, where do you want to put it? Well, make sure you navigate to that animations folder, which mine is in there. And I'm going to call this spawner left right. I never use spaces. I just use underscores. And now once you save that in there, we can start recording an animation. So just like a old VCR, ask your parents, uh, hit the record. It has a record button. Fast forward, rewind. Um, hit the record button. And to plan this out a little bit, at this point in time, at the beginning, I want it at this position. And if you move it around a little bit, it does create the first little diamond keyframes there. And it says, oh, I see something happened. I'm going to record a keyframe there. So cool. There I am. And I'm going to move the timeline forward by clicking in the timeline, like right on the numbers themselves, you can drag the timeline a little bit. And I know halfway through, I'll say it uh, 30 frames here, halfway through, I want it to be over here. I'm not gonna be super exact with this, but you could look at the X and Y and figure out more precisely. But, um, and the, you can see the diamond showed up there. And then at a full second, where do I want it to be? Well, I want it to return back over there. So I moved the timeline ahead and said at this point in time, I want it to be over here again. Now, if you do want to be a little more precise, I'll show you a cool little trick. I did a control Z there to undo that. So at this point in time, I want it to be over here, but I want it to be exactly where I started. Check this out. You can actually just select the keyframes and hit control C to copy and because the timeline's already over here I can hit control V and it pastes in those exact values so now I'm gonna stop the recording because I'm done animating and the space bar or this little triangle is the play button Zhoo! whoa that's fast now it's a little fast for me you can see it looping through the animation so to slow it down what you can do is uh, on my mouse button I'm gonna scroll out where you can actually drag the ends of these little uh, scroll bar things, but I like the mouse wheel scroll. And if you want to slow it down, just highlight all the keyframes at once and get the little stretcher arrow and drag that out. Now when I hit play, ah, much more relaxed. That looks good. Cool. Now it's not spawning anything yet, but we are done with our um, animation portion. So a control S is always good. Now, to actually make it spawn things, we're going to go add a script. 
So go into scripts, uh, scripts space chicken, and you'll find the SC spawner script. I'm going to drag it right onto my rounded square. And while we're here, we might as well actually name our square as the spawner. And there's a lot more action going on here. When you start getting a lot of stuff, sometimes it's helpful to just hit this little triangle and collapse those so it's not quite so distracting. My animator's there, all happy. And now I have my script attached. Now, this is a script I made, so all you really need to do is drag in what items you want it to spit out. So remember we made the prefab in the uh, last video? That's what we want. So there's my prefabs. I have the spawner selected here so I can actually see this and I'm going to drag this package, the prefab, into this little, where it says asteroid instance, right into that little window, it highlights, and then I drop it. Now, widen this out just a little bit. Uh, ignore the saves part for a second, but the asteroid initial delay, that is how long until it fires the first one? Well, it could be zero. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at zero. Now, the repeat delay is how often should it be creating those? So I'm going to try every half second, 0 0.5. So it's going to start right away and then every half second after that. Let's try that. Hit play. Give us a little more room here. Yeah, not too bad. Hey, they don't hurt us yet, of course, but good. You can play with those numbers a little bit, how often they're spawning, etc. Excellent. Now, I also wanted to spawn these save objects. So just like we did in the asteroid one, you're an old hat now at creating the uh, prefabs. So I'm going to throw my spray in there and give it some scripts. So in the space chicken sprites, I'm going to throw in this guy. Oh, this is good. I'm glad this happened. Um, you see it hiding behind the background there. Um, that's because there's a sorting order and I could bring this to the front but it might happen again for something later so I'm actually gonna click on the background and in the sprite renderer visibility options order and layer I'm gonna make that a negative number so just like negative one is fine and I better do it to the other one the twin up here right so that one doesn't cover anything up there we go I'm glad that happened weird um, so here's our save let's add a movement script to it so he's actually dropping and that'd be a movement there's my auto move the SC ammo auto rotation and I know I don't want gravity on the rigid body so that's a zero done with that guy uh, done with that auto move I want that going down at like uh, Oh, a negative three. Let's try that. And none on the X, and I don't want it relative to rotation. And actually, I'd uh, make it spin a little bit slower. Now, whoops, what am I doing? I'm not ready to play it. <laughs> we gotta tell it to spawn it. We just built the prefab so we could drag it into the prefabs. There we go. Now, we can delete this out of the hierarchy because we've built it, but we need to tell the spawner to actually spawn that new prefab that we made, this SC ammo here. And so with the spawner selected, I can now drag in my prefab into the saves instance area. And again, I'm not going to have any delay, but you could have one. Uh, saves repeat delay. I'm going to make those come out a lot faster. So let's do like... 0 0.2. They're going to be flying out of there. Now let's see what we're working with. Woo! Very plentiful. <laughs> there you go. You can play with those numbers and get something you like there. But Awesome. We've got a spawner. It's moving. It's throwing stuff at us. We've got a good looking game, but you can't really play it very well yet. So let's keep rolling. Good job.